Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever part of the world you happen to be watching me from right now. It is indeed the Car Chronicles movement time, and today I want to be outside. I want to be outside because I want to hear the birds, and I want to watch the sun, and I want to see the people running, and I want to look at the squirrels fighting. I want to, God help me, if I see a rabbit, I'm going to run. A lot of people don't know but I have a very high allergy of rabbits. And that, the allergies of rabbits are so bad for me until I would not be in a bad way. My esophagus will swell shut and it's almost like people have peanut allergies. I could actually die. And so that's an allergy. So when I see rabbits, I go, ah, because a lot of people don't know that about me. So that's a need to know you know, you know, a thing to know, really. A lot of people don't know that personally about me, but that's what it is. It's like you got allergies with peanuts and you got allergies with milk. I have rabbit allergies. And people are like, well, what kind of craziness is that? Eh, well, we found out the hard way. My nephew, in fact, has a rabbit, and that's how we found out when one, one day I was rushed to the hospital. This was years ago. And so I still thank God for the little furry creatures. I'm a nature nut. And a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, the city girl from Brooklyn is a nature nut. Yeah, I'm a nature nut. And so today, this morning, and forevermore, I will always love nature. So today, I want to be one with nature. There was my husband going up the timeline. Apostle Fred D. Good in the 30s, He's like, baby, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going outside today. Nishé, God bless you. So good to see you. Thank God. Corey Page, if Corey Page is on the timeline and Terry just went up the timeline, won't you just roll over to each other and just watch Call Chronicles together? He might be at work. God bless you all. How was everybody under the sound of my voice? Adriana Lynch is on here. So good to see you. Keisha just went up the timeline. God bless you all. God bless you, Minister Stephanetta. It's good to see you. I hope you are doing your assignments that I gave you, Minister Stephanetta, because a young lady lost her son and we want to connect with her. Last night, we had a high time where Apostle Fred brought the word. We have one more tribe to go. And so I'm so excited that he will be giving us the last tribe on this Wednesday coming up. And then we're going to start the series of the rapture. A lot of people don't understand that the rapture is very real. Zelda, God bless you. But the rapture indeed is very real. And it is coming because the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the earth. And so I am so honored that I did not. And Apostle Fred and I, we are not the type of pastors. Hey, Ruth is beautiful. We are not the type of pastors to pull the rapture out of our church. No, we speak openly about it. And so I am honored. Cheryl, God bless you. How are you? Um, God bless you, Sister Murphy. Cheryl Murphy, how you doing? I want to say hello to everyone that is watching me from around the world italy africa new zealand i don't even know how we were seen in north korea but we are seen in north korea must be a military base to everyone under the sound of my voice yolanda mays is good to see you click tag and share because it is car chronicles time i'm gonna go back in the car on monday but today i just want to commute with nature christopher martinez god bless you where are you guys logging in from today bread so good to see you sabrina what's going on sabrina how you doing she says marlena is marlena on here god bless you god bless you cecilia j mckinnis ah look at my girl the assistant pastor delirium michelle god bless you caress just went up the timeline shawnee sean i see you doing big things over there in atlantic city with the um political officers or i think it's your friend or your brother or somebody i watch it trust me i do tiffany jones click tag and share because we're going somewhere i want to say very openly congratulations to the women and the men because women just don't get engaged to marry men do too wake up y'all don't leave them out because if they would not get on one knee and ask us to be wives trust me we wouldn't be here and so we want to say thank god for you having the courage to want to lead a family and get a wife because when you get a wife you get the divine favor of god that's what she favor is all about which i hope you all are registering because jacaylin carr will be our girl and i've got so many wonderful guests that are coming you want to be in the house go to www.shefavor.org thank you so much it is may 2021 i hope that everything goes on well baltimore maryland is on here riley how are you tell me where you guys are coming from let's go to the word of god shall we someone said hey coach d tonight is god's men on deck that god's man on deck is apostle fred come on savannah's on here cassandra what's going on janika corka or corker cork 
Jakina C. God bless you. How you doing? God bless you. Let's go to the word of God. My little beep beeps, you're still probably sleeping because we don't know when you're going back to school. But I know that I'm praying for you. I want to say all of the women that got engaged, there were four actually calling one last night um, that I, you know, that God said to add to the repertoire. I'll say congratulations. Cedric, the men who are on here, Cedric Station, the men that are on here, you're part of CCM. I am honored to serve you all. Tenivia Jones Blackwell, it's so good to see you. I realized that Tenivia is just going up the timeline, and I always call her name, but she could not see for a while. She only could hear the Car Chronicles movement. However, she is on here, and it it's good to see you. Look at my girl, Sonia. She said, hey, Pastor, what's going on, Mississippi? Louisiana is on here. Let's go. Someone said, you preach them glasses and lipstick off your face. Alicia, I sure will. Will you wonderful apostle you? Let's go to Luke. We're going to do that. Let's go to Luke. Let's do that. Cheryl J. Anderson or Charlene J. Anderson. It's good to see you. To all of you graduates, it is so good. Mother Adele is on here. Luke 16, let's do that. We're going to talk about something today that is very monumental in our life and faith. Teresa Smith Davis, 1,800 people under the sound of my voice. Let's go. There was a certain rich man. God bless you all. Cassandra, how are you? Hey, Monique, what's going on? I need you all to go out and vote because there is something that has to happen. Please come on. Let's vote. God bless you all. Let's go. Yes, rings are still falling. There is a rich man. If anyone knows a rich man or a woman, thank you, Cedric, then God bless you all. Facebook is trying to push me to do something that I will never, ever, 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 ever agree to. It is not a rich thing. It is not a poor thing. It is a people thing. I'm going to say this very open so they can stop sending me notifications. I will never be a public figure. I am a servant. I will always be a servant of the Most High God. I am not like other pastors. I'm not other preachers. I'm not other prophets. I'm not any of them. I am Jamila Young, but Jamila Gooden to some. I will never be a public figure. I am a servant, and that is the only label I will wear concerning man's order. And so listen to me, everyone under the sound of my voice, whether you are rich or poor, a public figure or not, you eventually may be in this situation, or you might be in this situation right now. But this rich man was clothed in this fine purple and linen, and he was fair and he was scrumptious to the eye. And every single day, every single day, every single day he would pass by a certain man. There was a certain beggar and the last shall be first. Hear me. I understand COVID has put you in a situation where financially you don't know what to do. Trust me, that's about to change. You're begging, you're borrowing, some are stealing, and the last shall be first. This is not a prosperity message. This, my dear, if you stay tuned, is a message concerning your life. Hmm? The certain beggar named Lazarus was laid at the gate, full of sores. Hmm? He was in a bad way. He was sick, and he was broke. God, COVID got all of us thinking we sick. Some may not be that. It may be that you have a summer cold. It may be that you have allergies. Be careful. Don't let them pin something on you, but get tested if you shall. But I want you to understand his situation. He was baroque and he was sick. I don't care if you're sick mentally, Tonya, Coley, bless you. I don't care if you're sick naturally. I don't care if you're financially broke or rich and out of your mind. I know a whole lot of folks with a whole lot of money that wish they had an inkling of common six. We just recently found out on the news that there was a man, he was worth $600 million and leaped off of a balcony 27 stories high and crashed to his death. Money don't make you rich. Money don't make you rich. Hear me? There's someone right now that's riddling their body with sickness and cancer and wish that all the money in the world could save their life. Please understand, this man was sick, full of sores. The only thing he desired was to be fed with crumbs. Mm. The only thing he wanted was something to eat. He only wanted crumbs which would have fallen from the rich man's table. However, 
dogs would come and lick it up very quickly along with his sores. So the dogs were there when the man of God that could help him was not. And it came to pass that the beggar, unfortunately, he died. And he was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. COVID is taken, listen to me, all of you under the sound of my voice that have pre-existing, pre-existing, pre-existing conditions. You have to be very careful. Unfortunately, they died and they were buried. He carried him to the rich man to this certain place that most of us are doing our best not to go. That sky gonna cry, that moon gonna turn to blood, the earth is going to quake. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it is. But this rich man who had the eyes to do right found himself in hell, lifting up his eyes and being tormented. Then he looked afar and he saw Abraham. Not only did he see Abraham, he looked and saw the rich man. He looked and saw rich people. He looked and saw, is that Lazarus? It's funny because people are going to find themselves in a situation that they ridiculed you in if they're not careful. He looked at Dwayne Hubbard and said, no. I thought my money would get me there. I, 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 I thought that I thought that I was doing a good thing. I thought that I would be there. Why is he there? And I'm here. I found myself as this rich man looked and saw that the very person that he wasn't nice to was in a better position without money. Ah, favor is something else favor is very fair because god knows exactly who to give it to i can't stand when people say favor ain't fair it's only not fair because it ain't your season for it but it's very clear that the favor of god was on lazarus life because the bible said that he saw lazarus in the bosom of abraham <laughs> and the last shall be first so as he looked 2,300 people and he saw that Lazarus was where he wished he was going he he cried out and said father Abraham father Abraham please it's funny because the Bible said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't care if you are snoxic or not. I don't care if you are in the government with an orange face and a bad wig. I don't care who you are. Everyone is going to find themselves in a position where their money won't help them, but they're going to need God. Why is it that you think that the most powerful doctors, Dr. Fauci, Dr. God in heaven, whoever you're going to see this Thursday, whatever your doctor is, at some point in time, they tell you to go find your faith. God, at any point in time you've ever been to the place where you decided that you did not want to pray for your circumstances, and then you find yourself there, Praying, asking God, have mercy on me. The world at large is now saying, God, whatever we did, have mercy on us. God, you go by these stores and it's like a ghost town. God is saying, please bring your place to the place of repentance. Word of God said that he said, please, I, 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 I don't have the money now. Good. That's okay. Favor going to take care of that. I don't have the money now. This rich young ruler did not have the money to get him out of the circumstance. This rich young ruler that had fine clothes and Gucci and Louis Vuitton and whatever it is that folks is wearing. None of that matters. Why are you jealous about stuff that doesn't matter? Nowhere do they say it. Hear me. You're going to have a brink chuck going behind a funeral possession. <laughs> There was a rumor back in the day that Leona Hemsley left everything to the dogs. <laughs> God said, please pay attention to your soul. Please. 
and your money ain't gonna help you here, <laughs> rich young ruler. Your soul is what's important. Someone said, I don't understand this seeding and this tithing and all of this stuff because you don't understand we have to give something because God requires us sometime to read your scripture. There is wine offerings, there's flesh offering. Even the word of God said that if you desired sacrifice, I would have given it because we no longer have to sacrifice the lamb. But it's not that, it's the obedience. And I say this as a pastor. Sometimes you need to sacrifice your time. You need to get up early and give God work until you get a job. You need to realize that the sacrifice of obedient God huh, is greater than anything. Hear me. But God, because I love you and we fall underneath the Abrahamic law, mm -hmm, we're going to do what Abraham did because we are descendants of him. He gave God everything that he had, even a tenth of his wheat, his earnings, his harvest. We are that descendants, foolish people that ask me, why would you do this foolishness? And she happened to have a ministry herself. Don't understand people. Can I please have mercy? What? Oh, now you want something. But your arrogant, debaucherous self. You you want something. Here I got Kenya Lucy L U C I L L E. They're gonna give you that and then some. It, it's the that and then some. So therefore, the day you got left off in back pay, and that's what the struggle is. Don't worry, sit tight because they're giving you that and then some. Can you please send the beggar? Mm. Can you please send Lazarus? You mean the person you walked over? Now you want a favor, huh? Three, uh, Two thousand five hundred folks click tag your shit. You mean your mama that you wrongly? Okay. Now you want something. It's funny because when folks get in a different situation after they ridicule you, walk on you, will definitely tell you, I need a favor from you. Huh? Click tag a chair, it's going to get good. It's funny. That's why you got to be careful how you treat people because Hebrews 13 and 2 says, be careful who you entertain. Be careful who you put your mouth on. Be careful who you ridicule. Bible says be careful because you could be entertaining angels on the web. Be careful. Ruby Talbot, hear me. So now you want something. The very person that you walk over, you want something. The very person that you looked at, oh, I can't stand her. Now you want her to pray. The very person that you debauchelously did wrong, God bless you, Rodney, Maurice, you want something from them. Can you please send the beggar? You mean the one that you walk by every single day and only thing that they wanted was a cup of coffee. Can you please send the beggar? You mean the person that got into a place of unemployment that asked you, could you please put $20 in my car? Now you want something because you in a different situation now. God says, hear me. Yes, please. Ain't that the nerve? It's the nerve of folks that did you wrong to come back and ask you for a favor. God, it's funny. It's just like we get ready to deal with this whole politic thing with voting. How you go mistreat us and then turn around and say you want the black vote? Have you lost your mind? Are you crying? How, you ain't say nothing about George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement. You don't care about health care. Oh, let's not leave out the immigrants now. Now you want our vote. If you don't go sit the hell down, did I say that? Yeah, I did. You don't like it? Log off, go follow somebody else. How you going to turn around and ask us to vote for you? And you don't even care about the health care system. You don't care whether we wear I'm, I'm in my I'm in my backyard, y'all. You don't, you ain't even wearing a mask. You don't care about nothing. Now you're going to turn around and ain't this a blip? You're going to turn around and ask us for something. See, that's the way folks that got clout. As Cardi B and Offset said, people that got caught, Eddie, they always want something. They, they selfish. Don't ever have selfish people in your surf circle because they will take everything and leave you dead or die. That's what happened here. Yeah. But I need you to help him. Help me. What's up, to the, the heart twins? What? Yeah, what I need you to do is I need you to ask him to go. You want me to have this man that you walked over go do you a favor? Yeah, Lawanda Maddox. Yeah, I do. Can you have him go dip his hand? Hit, listen to this, Michelle. Hey, Apostle Fred, listen. Dip his little finger, Laura Renee, in the water. Mm, the very thing that you didn't find him worthy to have. Dip his little finger in the water and have him bring it to me, please. 
and cool my tongue, Ashika Clark, because I'm being tormented by the flames. <laughs> but Abraham said this. He says, now listen here, brother. Do you remember this man when you was alive? <laughs> you ain't received not one good thing from him. But now he is comforted. And you are being tormented. And besides all of this between us, you're there, is a great gulf. <laughs> it's a cluster. It's a hole. Basically, it's a grand canyon between us. <laughs> so that when you pass from to and fro, it's impossible to do that. Neither can I send him over and thrust him to you. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, can you please just, okay, if that don't work, send him to my father's house. I have five brothers, and, and, and they, 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 they may testify to them and, and, and let them come to this place of torment. It's funny because when folks get in trouble, they throw everybody under the bus. Ain't that right, Thump? When folks find themselves in trouble, <laughs> see, that's why you got to be careful. <laughs> you, 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 you don't know who you're hanging around because not only do they get in trouble, <laughs> they taking everybody with them. I got five. This ain't got nothing to do with your brother, son. This ain't got nothing to do with your good girlfriend. You ain't got nothing to do with your ex. This ain't got nothing to do with your brothers. This ain't got nothing to do with the brothers. It's got to do with you. Abraham said to him, they have Moses, the prophet. Let them go and hear him. And he said, Father Abraham, but if one went and to them from the dead. They tell them don't come here. They tell them don't come to this place. Don't come here. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. If you allow me for a period of time to tell you. One. Everybody put up one. One touch can change your entire situation around. Allow me to say that for you because you don't understand whether you're in a good place and it going bad because of COVID. Uh -huh. Maybe you were in a bad place and it turned around because of COVID. God said, whatever it is, my hand is upon it. Y'all don't understand what's going on here in the atmosphere. And the last is now about to be first. It's in the atmosphere already, but you're not paying attention. What's happening is folks that never find themselves uh, in home ownership, uh, finding themselves turning the key of a house. Uh, it never would exist to you uh, that you had a problem in your flesh, uh, meaning your health wasn't doing so great, uh, whether you had pre-existent or not. Uh, you find yourself in a situation uh, where financially you could not afford a doctor. Uh, now, child, because they did away with Obamacare uh, and they don't care, uh, uh, what's happening now is people are finding themselves uh, at the mercy of a doctor saying uh, you ain't got COVID but we found this. Uh, let us deal with the circumstances so God knows exactly what to heal. Uh, Y'all don't understand God says uh, it takes one touch of the master's hands. Uh, someone said that and Lord here I am and I'm asking you uh, what shall I do? I'm singing songs. Uh, God said if you realize uh, that one touch of the master's hands uh, has the ability to change the circumstances. Uh, you operate better in your faith. Huh? Hear me, Monique, listen to me. Huh? God said they'll wake up and tell you, huh? you about to experience the finger of God. Huh? Most of you don't understand that in the children of Israel situation, huh? uh, God, Pharaoh said, bring me the astrologers, huh? bring me the wizards, bring me the magicians. Huh? I need to know what's happening here. Huh? What is the calamity going on in the earth? Huh? And this is where it got good. Huh? Uh, one of the astrologers and one of the sorcerers said, huh? excuse me, Pharaoh, huh? you can't do nothing about this, huh? but this happens to be the finger of God. Huh? Huh? Y'all better understand 2,700 folks huh? under the sound of my voice. Huh? It takes one touch of the master's hands huh? and God said, wake up and tell you one touch one touch is 
It's about to change your situation around. Hmm? See, that's why you got to be careful um, God, uh, how you treat folks because uh, your situation could turn around in an instant. Hmm? You got to be careful how you talk about folks because uh, the very folks that you put your mouth on, uh, those are the individuals that you secretly tip, 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 tip on a secret page after you struggle, uh, throw them under the bus and say, um, can you please pray for me? You've got to be careful how you deal with folks. Uh, listen to me tag your co-worker right now that's trying to get you fired. Huh? You don't really know whose mouth you got your mouth on. Huh? You don't understand who I am in God. Huh? God says to tell you, huh? be careful how you deal with folks in a bad situation huh? because it may be the finger of God. Huh? Why would you say that, woman of God? Huh? I've got to say this because most of you don't understand huh? that God said Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. He says, there is everything that has a set time under the heavens and the sun. Someone under the sound of my voice. God said to me, woman of God, I need you to pray. Ah, beautiful girl, mother ass. God, she was like, pow, 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 pow. Oh, Lord, I'm just giving you your testimony. My husband's name is Fred. But, oh, God, as she began to pull her wig off, I began to say, my God, today, you're going through what? She said, chemo, because cancer has hit me. You don't understand. Huh? Your circumstance could turn around in an instant. Huh? But oh God, thank God for God huh? who has the power and the authority to deliver us from them all. Huh? Might I ask you a hard question? Huh? Can you still serve God huh? going through chemo? Can you still serve God? Huh? Then the pandemic hits us. Can you still serve God huh? with a son incarcerated? Can you still serve God huh? when they tell you you're locked out of your job? Huh? Can you still still serve God uh, with the repo man knocking. Can you still serve God? Hm. In Hades, living in hell. Hear me. Most of you under the sound of my voice. Uh, you going through hell. Uh, uh, God, because you ain't even get in hell yet. Uh, hold on. This is not a piercing experience uh, because I believe hell is real. Hear me. You're going through hell right now. Hm. I don't know what to do. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> My friend, hold on now, before because I got folks that would love to see me fall, but God got me. My throat, let me do a childlike disposition. My folk, mommy, ain't feeling so well. Your throat is a little tickly, and you're afraid to go to the doctor because you're afraid they're going to put the pandemic on you. Y'all know, huh? <clears throat> <laughs> you're going through the changes that you normally would go through huh, because of your allergies. Huh? But, oh, God, I'm afraid to go to the doctor because uh, they're going to stick COVID on me. Huh? God, what do I do? Huh? Oh, God, see, understand when you don't know what to do, huh? fear gets you. Huh? Oh, God, huh? But nowhere in the confines of the scripture huh, did I find the poor man huh, begging in a place of fear. Huh? There had to be a level of him huh, that begged in a place of faith. Huh? And then get she, huh? because faith Faith is the only thing huh, that can get you out of this situation. The word of God said that this very man that was begging huh, found himself dead in a tomb. Huh, and the God of Asher huh, said, Lazarus, come forth, huh, drop him, and let him go. Good. Huh, one circumstance in touch from the master huh, will have a dead situation. Huh, drop it and let it go. Huh? Oh God, huh, I don't care what is happening in your life, dog. Huh, God's touch will say, drop it now. Huh, let him go. Huh? Enough is enough. Huh? See, your enough ain't God's enough. 2,800 folks could tag and share. Huh? How long am I going to have to deal with this? Huh? There's an expiration date on your drop it and let it go. God, huh? There's an expiration date. Drop it and let it go. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because cause Rufus is laughing at his sister. Drop it and let it go. God understood. Watch this. He understood this. He understood that there was a time and a place. I uh, got for God's finger to hit you. Huh? But you're too busy giving life the finger. Huh? Not the right finger, the wrong one. You're too busy looking at God mad. Huh? Pointing your finger in judgment. God, huh? hey, God bless you, Pastor Log Logan. God bless you. You are too busy huh? judging folks that's trying to do right. Huh? You're too busy pointing at Lazarus saying, Oh, 
<laughs> See, this segment of the message is for the judgmental folks. Huh? The same finger you pointing at somebody, huh? four more is pointing back at you. Huh? You got to be careful when you use the finger of judgment, because huh? it's the finger of judgment you're going to need huh? to change your situation with God. Listen, God said that there is an expiration date for dropping it and letting go. Huh? There is an expiration date and a time where I'm going to point my finger at your circumstances and said, enough is enough. Hold on. Proverbs 19 and 2. I need you to put it up so I can open up your understanding. It says, desire without knowledge is not even good. Mm -hmm. And whosoever make haste in what he does with his feet, mm -hmm. he's going to miss the way. Mm -hmm. Which means if you don't have enough sense and sensibility huh, to wait for the finger of God, huh, you're going to get mad and ball up a fist and miss it. Huh? Hold on, you ain't got no time to punch nobody in the face. You ain't got no time. Hmm? God is saying what I need you to do hmm, is trust me during the process huh, of me taking you to the way. God, huh? if you ever decide that you needed directions from someone huh, or something, now listen to me now, I'm 48 years young, Apostle Fred and I. We're what you call June babies. Now, listen to me. Sabrina said, you better preach, Pastor. Hear me. Jacqueline Solomon, bless you. Listen to me. If you ever decided back in the day, they had something, God bless you, Apostle Moore. They had something called a map. Remember that? It's the map. It's the map. It's the map. It's the map. All of my door of the explorers, folks that got babies in the house, driving them crazy with that. Do they watch that anymore? Well, Ian, there is something called a map. You take your face finger and find the red mark or the green one or even the blue one. Y'all remember what maps was before there was a GPS. We had maps. But somebody would say, I cannot read these things. Nine times out of ten when I was in a car with my cousin James, I wasn't able to read the map. I told y'all, listen to me. But I would pull up for somebody and say, which way do I go? They would take their finger. God, and Mother Cece, they would say, that away. If you go up that street and you make a left and you go that way, you will find your destination. And he said, Listen to me. Um, what I need you to do is take Lazarus' finger um, and point his finger um, in the cold water um, to give me some relief. Uh, there is relief in the finger of God uh, while you are still waiting for the master's hand. Um, God said it takes the little finger of God. Um, can you imagine if God uh, points in your direction uh, and change your circumstance around? Uh, oh God, the joy it will be. Uh, but oh, that's just a touch. Uh, a touch can do a mighty great thing. Huh? Ain't that right, woman with the issue of blood? Huh? I got the touch of the Father's hand. Huh? Could change your circumstance around. Huh? But oh, when he says that you're being faithful over that little thing, huh? now I can open my hand and make you ruler over many. Huh? Hear me. Huh? God said you about to experience the turnaround touch of God in a bad situation. Lazarus did not complain. He begged. Watch this. Did you know if you understand what mercy is? Mercy is given. Medical show when you are put in a position of begging. God, see, folks, you don't understand. You don't beg for the person. You beg to the person that can give it. If you don't believe me, the woman with the issue of blood, she was dying on her knees begging her her you don't even understand the woman with the alabaster box uh, was down there saying god with a bundles uh, have mercy and thank you god uh, i beg of thee god uh, thank you jesus uh, most of you under the sound of my voice uh, you too proud i feel a tc well, michelle eddie get the get the karaoke machine i feel a tlc moment happy birthday karen tomorrow is a birthday i feel a a TLC moment, Eddie. Michelle, let's do it. I ain't too proud to beg. Y'all begging for the wrong stuff. You're begging for folks to love your God. You're begging for somebody to knock your back out. You know you are. Stop playing. Everybody on here ain't safe. You're begging God for the house. You're begging God for the wife. God knows when you get each other, treat each other well. You're begging for God to switch the circumstances around. Those of you who are under the sound of my voice, understand the last of it. Find himself uh, begging, but this 
poor man uh, did not understand in his begging. Uh, there was a level of faith uh, that will resurrect him in the right time to get up. Uh, but the man that had the purple and the Gucci and the hoochie, oh uh, uh, God, and a bad wig, God knows in Congress, uh, he found himself at the feet of Jesus, uh, looking at his circumstance, turn around, uh, begging for his life back. God, uh, he found himself uh, looking at the person that he overlooked uh, in the situation he wish he had. You know, folks don't like you and they jealous of you and you ain't got nothing. Huh? But oh, it's the favor of God that they see. Huh? And now they're saying, listen here, huh? can he please have mercy on me? What? It's funny because uh, you ain't too proud to beg. Uh, if you did it in the morning or in the middle of the night, no, it ain't that time of show. Uh, but God is saying, if you find yourself uh, at the place where you don't know what to do, uh, can you please beg God uh, to touch me in my circle? Can you please, Lord, just, just touch me? And God says, yes. He says, what I'm going to do because you were the Lazarus. You were the Lazarus that understood that maybe God got me here. You were the Lazarus because Lazarus' sister was praying for him. You are the Lazarus. He said, how did I get sick? I'm begging here. You are the Lazarus financially. I'm in a rut. Can you please bless me, provider? And God is saying, yeah. You may not see it now. But you just have patience and wait. Lazarus found himself in a place of peace. In his circumstances. He said, earth has no sorrow. That heaven cannot heal. And I understand that we are all going through because of this pandemic. But earth, you have no sorrow. My God cannot heal. I recall years ago, because I've been in ministry for years, that a young lady called me to go to St. Michael's Hospitals, one of the largest AIDS hospitals in New Jersey, right off Broad and Market. And she said, my brother is going to be healed, isn't he, prophet? And I said to her, I said, Pray that God's will be done. And she went out to go get us something to drink. Judy DeVoe, God bless you. The Holy Spirit said to me, he taught me about death. He said, sometimes people pray for the healing of the person that is bedridden, comatose. Sometimes people pray for people who are laying in a coma-like vegetated state. They are suffering with some sort of fatality in their health. And God said that is a very selfish prayer. And I sat there and I look at this young boy going because he had full-blown AIDS. She came back and she said, what did God say? And the Lord said, Stephen. I said, okay, Holy Spirit. And I said to her, I said, I'm going to use her initial NS. Could you please... Um, give me some time with your brother. And the Holy Spirit said, Stephen. I said, okay. And he began to talk to me about death. And he said, when Stephen was with his boys holding the coats and he got caught, he was about to be stoned. And as they got ready to pick up a rock, he cried out and he said, Father God, please. His prayer was, God, I don't want to go out like this. He said, right now, God, I don't want to die like this. The word of God said, immediately the heavens opened up and received Stephen before one rock was thrown. And the Holy Spirit said, see, I've got to honor the prayers of the person laying there knocking at this door. The prayer that I have to honor is the one suffering. Because at some point in time, you're not privy to their thoughts. 
but they hear the voice of God in that vegetated state. 3,000 people under the sound of my voice. God said to me, he says, why is it that I have to honor the prayers of the living and override the prayers of those that are suffering? He said, so what I have to do, I've got to honor what his desire is because I know the beginning and the end of the thing. Don't worry. Her morning shall turn to dance. But I've got to deal with the one that is suffering. Lisa Jones, bless you. When she came back upstairs, and she said, God's going to heal my brother, isn't he? I said, let's pray that God's will is done, and let's pray for the strength of the family. Why am I saying this? Because these two individuals were going through something. And I'm going to go There's one individual that was suffering. He was sick. He was going through. And there was one individual that was full of health and finances both of them had souls see at some point in time you've got to realize one could be healed and one cannot i don't know which pendulum of a spectrum we all are going to be on at some point in time in our life but i do understand that there is a god that has the ability to hear us whether we are saying god have mercy or we're begging he said, I will supply the need according to the riches and glory. I get that. But sometimes we got to stop and say, God, right now, I am concerned about my soul. That is something we all have. But here we overlook. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to call your name. But no, you don't. I am not going to call your name. I will get in your inbox. No, you don't. No, you don't. I'm not going to call your name. You just went up the timeline. No, you don't, young lady. No, you don't. I need you to understand 3,000 people under the sound of my voice. God is saying, listen to me. Hear me. I am about to change your circumstance and your situation with just one touch. See, the finger of judgment only works with God. Mm. It is obsolete when it comes down to men. See, a man will judge you and don't have the ability to help you. A man could judge you and he may have the finances to help you. But oh, when God fixes a thing, his judgment is no longer needed. And God says, right where you are, I'm going to touch your circumstances and shift it around. It's people right now, and I'm telling you, child, they are so happy, and they are living life like it's golden, and they happy, and oh, everything is great. And all of a sudden, boom, you got laid off from your job. Oh, you got a good marriage, and boom. In an instant, this entire world has changed. The Holy Spirit said to me last night prophetically, he said, there is going to be a wailing in the earth. He said, there is going to be earthquakes. They're going to come from the north. They're going to, they're going to come from everywhere. And I said, God, I could not even leave the church because of I became Jeremiah the prophet. I became sorrowful. My husband couldn't even pick me up. Michelle couldn't pick me up because I felt it. I said, God, he showed me buildings. They were falling underneath. There was subway system. And I said, God, what is this? These are, this is a major city. These are major cities. He said, no, 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 no. He says, because I have the ability to shift it all. See, people live life like there's no God. I don't like that. And the rich man live like there ain't no God. He ain't real. I got money. Yeah, And God says, that has nothing to do with your soul. Everything that book tell me to do, I do it. Everything, Shawnee. Everything that book tell me to do, I do it. Because I realize I got a soul. No, I, I ain't Oprah. I met her. She's a wonderful woman. Oh, she's so sweet. She got the biggest hugs that ever. Uh, what? I was joy meeting Oprah. Joy. And then after I met her, I walked a couple doors down, a couple tables down, and it was Floyd Mayweather. With, God bless you. There's my sister-in-law going up the timeline. What's up, Silver? Going up the timeline. The, the, I, I, Oprah, it was good to see her. Oh, I got pictures with her. Oh, it was wonderful meeting her. Then I walked a couple more steps, and there was Floyd Mayweather. I said, hmm. 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 And I'm stuck between these two moguls, these wealthy people. And I met this little girl from Brooklyn. 
And God says, see, it takes one touch. One touch. It takes one touch to change both situations on both sides. I said, well, I'm, 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 I'm low on the totem pole, but God, I thank you I'm here. And God said to me, he said, people don't understand that you could be in a good situation and it could change like that. You could be a bad situation and it changed like that. And God says, everybody was just, just happy, go lucky. It, the bill, everywhere you go, it says close, 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 close. No longer, you can't get customers. If your phone died, you in trouble. Because Verizon ain't trying to let you in the door. And yes, you could come to my church, but you got to get a temperature. You got to wear a mask. You got to have gloves. This world is not normal anymore. The new normal has started. It changed in an instant. And God says, no matter what's happening in this world, I have the ability to change your circumstance in an instant. I beg for God's mercy. I myself, you may not like it, I'm seeding for the mercy of God. Because when my life takes a turn, I don't care which way the pendulum swings, I need his mercy to get me through every circumstances. Oh, the greatest time of my life happened when I said I do. And one of the greatest times of my life is when I said, sign these papers. Whichever way the pendulum swung, God was with me. And let me be the monumental voice to tell you that no matter where you are, God's mercy will meet you. I am Pastor Good, because all that's going to change. I'm working on going all through all that. And you know how it is when you're mad. But I promise you, every time you click my button, I'm going to tell you the truth. Your circumstances is about to change. Don't allow your circumstances to change you. Ah! That means don't allow your circumstances to push you away from the only person that can restore it all. That's why you ought to be careful when you're going through something and you will to in your faith. Why would you wilt it in your faith? Faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. Which means that why would you wilt it in your faith? Faith is the only thing that restored it all. That's why the enemy always attacks your faith. Because if he could attack the thing that you need to restore it all back, then you'll be in a bad way. God is real. There's so many people you so worried about the devil. Just oh, the devil, the devil, the devil, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. Okay, okay. Let me tell you something. Combat him with your faith, not your fear. Fear, fear feeds him. You fear him, but you don't fear God. And maybe that's what's wrong with this world. Because the world don't fear God. The Bible says that's the first sign of wisdom. And we just got a whole lot of Christian dummies. Because you don't fear God, so there's no wisdom. There's no knowledge. And God is saying, you fear the devil more than you fear God. And it's the wrong, that's, that's not how it works. He said, but I'm going to show my mercy because you need it. New mercy every day, even Thomas, bless you. And God is saying, I'm about to change your situation, Becky Holloway, bless you, with one touch. Because my mercy will give it to you. Lazarus, he just said, listen, God, okay. He took it. He said, look, come forth. Drop him. Let him go. The rich man that was all arrogant, nasty, he said, look, <laughs> well, you want me to do what? Nah, look, they got Moses. You, on the other hand? He said, no, 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 no. He said, what I want you to do is go tell them don't come to this place. And every day pastors are telling you to get it right so you won't get, find yourself in this place. It blew my mind, Silver, where the Holy Spirit told me. He said, hell has enlarged itself daily. 